Testing pupil function is an important part of every eye examination. Sight-threatening and life-threatening disorders can be detected during using these simple tests. So the first thing you should do is check for any sicoria, which is a difference in pupil size between the eyes. So make sure you have a low-powered lens in the lens wheel and eliminate the pupils from roughly 20 centimetres. This allows you to check for any sicoria more effectively than using the naked eye. If you have noted any sicoria with the direct ophthalmoscope in mid-illumination, it's important to also see how that changes under different illumination conditions. This will allow you to detect the abnormal pupil and it will also allow you to perform a differential diagnosis on the efferent defect that will have caused this. So if the anisocoria increases in dim light, it's a sympathetic problem. However, if the anisocoria increases in bright light, it's a parasympathetic problem. Next thing you want to do is check the light reflex. So ask the patient to look at a non-accommodative target at six meters. You want to eliminate the pupil from below. First of all, checking the direct reflex and then the consensual reflex. That's the reaction of the contralateral eye. And you want to do this at least three times just to make sure that the pupil is reacting normally. You do the same for the other eye, so again checking the direct reflex three times and also the consensual reflex. You can also check the near reflex, so we give the patient a target to look at, a near target if you look towards this letter here. And if you look to the distance, back to the target again. And what you should find is that the pupil becomes smaller in response to the close target. And that is the accommodation and near reflex, near triad. Basically, you can get circumstances where the light reflex is abnormal and the near reflex is normal. And this is called light near dissociation. However, you can argue that you can have no situation where you have light near dissociation without the distance reflex being abnormal. So you might only need to do this if you have an abnormal light reflex response. So in order to check for the relative afferent pupillary defect, you use the swinging flashlight test. Essentially, you are shining the light into one eye for two to three seconds and quickly swing over to the other eye. And what you should find is that the eye you're moving to should dilate very quickly and then constrict again. And that is because it is reacting to the direct response that it is now receiving. An eye with RAPD or relative afferent pillory defect will dilate even when the direct response, the, the light is shining upon it. And that is because the consensual response to dilate is stronger than the direct response input that it is receiving from the afferent pathway. So interestingly, if there is a kind of equal defect of the input of the afferent pathway, into the brain, you will not get RAPD. It is a relative difference in the afferent pathway between the two eyes.